Hey, welcome to my quick little video about how to drive in roundabouts in Ontario, Canada. Uh, over the last five years or so, we've been seeing more and more roundabouts popping up all over the place. And being a motorcycle rider, I think that we are far more exposed to potential injuries in the case of automobile accidents. So I thought I would take the opportunity to put this quick little video together uh, about the proper rules and guidelines for safely navigating roundabouts, uh, not only for motorcycle riders out there, but for all drivers of all types of vehicles. First of all, let me say that I love roundabouts. I think they're a great addition to the Ontario roadway. I like them for a whole bunch of reasons. Firstly, safety, obviously. I think it's far safer having roundabouts rather than having traffic going back and forth through the intersection at full speed. Uh, roundabouts reduce the possibility of having fast, dangerous accidents. And even if you do get into an accident in a roundabout, the fact that all the traffic is going so much slower reduces the possibility of having a severe and dangerous accident. On top of that, the fact that roundabouts uh, don't require the lights to operate because they operate purely based on their design. So even if the power goes down, even if the power grid goes down, even if the computer switching system malfunctions or goes down, roundabouts are still going to operate as they always do very safely. Um, so I think for th all those reasons that uh, roundabouts are a far safer way for people to commute through intersections. Secondly, I think that roundabouts are far more economical. Um, at a time, you know, when, when taxpayer money is hard to come by, I think that the costs involved of building roundabouts versus, you know, having to install electrical lines and then poles and lighting systems, and then over the long term, having to maintain those lighting systems and those, those computer systems to operate those switches, I think that roundabouts are far more economically viable. They make your tax dollar go a lot further. And thirdly, from an environmental standpoint, I think that roundabouts are, are far less uh, consuming of natural resources. Not only are you not using electricity to operate the lighting system, but on top of that, studies have shown that uh, traffic wait times are greatly reduced with roundabouts. So you're not having huge amounts of traffic sitting at the lights, idling unnecessary, wasting time, not only burning fuel unnecessarily, but also wasting your time. And so I think it's for all these reasons that we're seeing more and more roundabouts pop up all over the place. And I also think it's why going into the future, we're going to be seeing more and more and more of them. So if roundabouts have been causing you a little bit of stress and dealing with them, they are new. And, uh, you know, maybe you're a new driver and you're just learning how to drive and roundabouts are, are, you know, causing you a little confusion. Or perhaps you're an older driver that's been driving for two or three decades, but have never had to deal with roundabouts. And for either of those reasons, they're causing you a little bit of stress. Keep on watching because now we're going to be looking at all the rules for safely and properly navigating roundabouts. So here we are at my little roundabout diagram that I put together for this video. And as you can see, it's a two-lane roundabout. They're the most common type of roundabout that you're seeing in Ontario. Over in Europe, they have three and four and five-lane roundabouts. But uh, over here in Ontario, so far, we've, we've mainly got these two-lane style roundabouts. So that's the one we're going to be looking at uh, for the purpose of this video. And so right off the bat, dealing with roundabouts really only requires two simple things. The first is vehicle position, depending on uh, which way you plan on exiting the roundabout. And the second, of course, is proper signaling both in and out of the roundabout so that you can communicate to other drivers what your intentions are with your vehicle. On top of that, there are two basic phases to the roundabout. The first, of course, is the approach or entry phrase into the roundabout. And then secondly, being inside of and exiting from the roundabout, both of which require both proper vehicle positioning and proper signaling to do safely and effectively. So the first thing you're going to notice as you're approaching a roundabout is that there's going to be a lot of signage posted uh, prior to the roundabout warning you that a roundabout is coming. So you're going to see signs like the yellow diamond shaped sign telling you that there's a roundabout coming up. Uh, then in the top right, you're going to see signs telling you which lane you want to be in uh, depending on where you're trying to go. And very often those symbols are painted on the ground in front of the roundabout. And then lastly, you're going to very often see a legend uh, like at the bottom here, telling you which exit you want to take, depending on where you're trying to go to and where you want to exit the roundabout. So now you're getting ready to enter into the roundabout. 
and you've seen the signs leading up to it. You've been able to pick the proper lane to be in, uh, depending on where you want to go. And the first major rule of roundabouts is that entering traffic into the roundabout must yield to traffic that's already inside of the roundabout. Traffic in the roundabout has the right of way. And while you don't have to come to a full and complete stop, you do have to make sure that the way is clear both of other vehicles as well as other pedestrians and bicyclists that are possibly in or around the roundabout at the walkways. So even though you don't have to come to a full and complete stop, you do have to yield and make sure that the way is clear before you enter into the roundabout. So getting back to proper vehicle positioning and proper signaling, essentially entering into the roundabout is exactly like entering into any normal intersection. So that is, if you're going to the right, you're going to be in the right-hand lane with your right-hand signal on. And if you're going to the left, you're going to be in the left-hand lane with your left-hand signal on. And if you're going to be going straight through, then you're going to, you can be in either lane and you don't need to be signaling as you're entering into the roundabout because essentially you're going straight through the roundabout. So before we carry on, I just want to point out that this issue of signaling your turn as you enter into the roundabout is a little bit ambiguous at this point in Ontario. If you go to the Ontario website or the Ministry of Transportation website, including the current driver's handbook, they actually make no mention of you being required to signal your turn as you would at a normal intersection as you enter into the roundabout. On the other hand, if you go to websites like the Region of Waterloo or the Halton Region website or the City of Ottawa website, they do in fact state that you're required to signal your turn as you enter into the roundabout. So the fact that not everybody's on the same page at this point in time regarding your signaling your turn as you enter into the roundabout makes things a little more complicated. That being said, my guess is, is that at some point in the future, the Ontario government is probably going to change the rules and say that you do have to in fact signal your turn into the roundabout if you look at places like great britain and australia and places that have had roundabouts for a long period of time it's common practice and standard practice to signal your turn as you enter into the roundabout so for the sake of this video for the sake of as far as my instruction on it um, I do say that you should signal your turn. I think it's safer, especially given the fact that roundabouts are fairly new in Ontario. Um, just the fact that you're communicating to the drivers around you what you're going to be doing with your vehicle just makes it safer. And, you know, if you prevent even a handful of accidents that are unnecessary from happening, I say that it's worth it. So, again, for the f sake of this video, um, I'm saying that you do, in fact, signal your turn as you enter into the roundabout. So all that ambiguity aside, uh, summing up the entering phase into the roundabout, again, it's exactly like entering into any normal intersection. So if you're going to be going to the right, you stay right and signal right. If you're going to be going to the left, you stay left and signal left. And if you're going to be going straight, you can be in either lane and you don't need to signal because essentially you're going straight through the roundabout. So now we move on to the exiting portion of dealing with the roundabout. So far, you've seen the signage, you've picked the right lane, you've signaled your turn into the roundabout, you've yielded to traffic as you enter into the roundabout, and now you're inside of the roundabout and you're getting ready to exit. And the one major rule, and there's no ambiguity about this one, is that you must signal to the right to exit the roundabout, no matter whether you're going right or left or even straight. You, once you're in the roundabout, you must signal to the right to exit from the roundabout. So going back to our original scenario, if you're going to be going to the right and you're going to be taking the very first right exit out of the roundabout, then you're already in the right-hand lane. You already have your right-hand signal on. So you can simply leave your signal on as you enter into the roundabout and then directly exit out the first right-hand lane and exit the roundabout. So if you're going to be going to the left, you entered into the roundabout in the left-hand lane. You had your left-hand signal on. You keep your left-hand signal on as you enter into the roundabout. You continue around the roundabout on the inside lane. And then once you're past the exit before your exit, you then signal to the right to indicate to traffic around you that you're then going to be exiting the roundabout. 
And it's important here to point out that you do not change lanes in the roundabout. Whatever lane you enter into the roundabout in, you exit directly from that lane. That's, I think, one of the more difficult things for people to wrap their head around the fact that they, when they exit from the inside lane, they're essentially crossing the outside lane to exit. But that's exactly how you do it. You do not change lanes when you're inside of the roundabout. And when you are exiting from that inside lane, it's extra important to make sure that you signal to the right to indicate to other drivers that you are exiting. Very often you're gonna have other drivers that are possibly entering into the roundabout behind you, possibly on the outside lane on the outside of you, or possibly trying to enter into the roundabout on that outside lane in front of you. And that's why it's extra important to make sure you use that signal to indicate to all these drivers that you are going to be exiting from the roundabout and therefore gonna be crossing across that outside lane to exit. So if you're going to be going straight, you entered into the roundabout in either of the two lanes. You didn't need to signal while you were entering into the roundabout, but you still need to signal to the right to exit the roundabout no matter which lane you're in. So again, um, as you pass the previous exit or the exit right before your exit, you want to signal to the right to indicate to other traffic that you are going to be exiting from the roundabout and potentially crossing that outside lane if you were on the inside lane when you entered. So to sum up the exiting phase of dealing with the roundabout, um, you must signal to the right to exit the roundabout no matter which direction you're going, and you do not change lanes when you're inside of the roundabout. You always enter and exit in the same lane. So the one last thing I wanted to point out was uh, dealing with trucks and buses and other large vehicles when you're trying to navigate your way through the roundabout. These vehicles very often need both lanes to make their way through the roundabout. And very often as you're entering into the roundabout, if you have one in front of you, you're gonna notice that they're gonna try and take up both lanes. They're gonna straddle in between both lanes as they enter into the roundabout. And this is really to prevent other drivers from trying to pull up beside them and go through the roundabout beside them. These large vehicles really need to utilize both lanes in order to safely and quickly get through the roundabout. So if you're if you're coming up to a roundabout and you have a big truck or a big bus in front of you, just be aware that as you get closer, they're going to try and squeeze over and take up both lanes. Don't try to get up beside them. Even if you're on a motorcycle, I know that you think because you're smaller that you can you need less space and therefore you'll be able to zip around the outside of them. But you're just going to potentially cause a dangerous situation for both you and other drivers around you. You know, truckers, they keep this country moving day and night and uh, give them a break. Give them the space they need. Trust me, as soon as they get through that roundabout, they're going to move over to the right-hand lane and give you a lot of space to pass safely and quickly. So always be on the lookout for large vehicles and uh, give them the space they need. So that pretty much wraps up this video on dealing with roundabouts in Ontario. To sum up all the main points, Everybody must yield to traffic that's already inside of the roundabout. If you're going to be going to the right, you want to stay right and signal right. If you're going to be going left, you want to stay to the left and signal left. If you're going to be going straight through the roundabout, you can be in either lane and you don't need to signal when you enter into the roundabout. Everybody must signal to the right to exit the roundabout no matter which way they're going to be going. Don't change lanes when you're inside of the roundabout. Whatever lane you enter into the roundabout in, you must exit from. And last but not least, make room for large vehicles. Give them the space they need so that they can navigate the roundabout safely. And I thought I would end this video with some cool little time-lapse footage of the devious Seven Circle roundabout in Swindon, England. That's right, there's seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven circles in this roundabout. And if you wanna check out the rest of this footage, I put the link down below. It was shot by Jake Sylvester. Head on over there and give him a like for shooting this cool little bit of footage. And if you thought this video was helpful, if it helped you out, leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Drive safe out there, and thanks for watching.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>